So you bought a Ryzen 5000 CPU and a motherboard to go with it that had either QFlash or BIOS flashback. But how the heck do you flash a motherboard without the CPU socketed? Don't worry, we're gonna go through all of that right now and get you up and running in no time. Coming right up. Come, 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 come up. Hi, welcome back PC Builders. I'm Jason, of course. Today we're gonna go and teach you how to use your QFlash, or if it's a Gigabyte board, or BIOS flashback if it's any of the other manufacturers, in order to flash the BIOS on your board without using a CPU installed. This is particularly important if you have a Ryzen 5000 CPU and you just got a motherboard that doesn't have the little sticker that says Ryzen 5000 ready. You can see this one did not, for instance. So we're gonna go over all of that today. If you're new to the channel, PC Builder is all about condensing down the technical information to give you the best price to performance in your builds. So if this is the kind of content you wanna support, remember to like the video, subscribe, and click the bell icon. It's a free way for you to support the channel and the content and get what you need to get a better build. With that, let's jump into it. Okay, let's very briefly go over what you need in order to get this done. The first thing you're gonna need is you need a motherboard that has QFlash, if it's a Gigabyte board, that's what they call it, or BIOS Flashback, if it's MSI, ASUS, or ASRock. If your motherboard doesn't support that feature, then you're gonna to need to take a 3000 series CPU, socket it, uh, a CPU that the board will support out of the box, update the BIOS, and then put in the new Ryzen 5000 CPU. If you don't have access to that, Micro Center, if there's one near you, will do it for a fee. Other folks can also do it for a fee. Or I would reach out to your motherboard manufacturer and see if you can send them the board and have them update it and send it back to you. I know several motherboard manufacturers have offered to do that. So if you do have a board that supports BIOS flashback, what do you need? Well, obviously you need the motherboard. And the other things you're gonna need is you're gonna need the power supply and you're gonna need a USB drive. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna download the BIOS onto the USB drive. We're gonna hook up the power to the board itself we're gonna press a button and we're gonna watch it go. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure to get your thumb drive ready. So it needs to be formatted as FAT32. So we're gonna come down here. I've already renamed it as BIOS Update. It, yours might say Samsung or whatever, you know, Kingston or whatever it is. Just go ahead and click on this drive, right click on it. And you wanna come down here to Format. Now warning, anything that's on this drive is about to be erased, so make sure there's nothing on it that you really want. There is move it off and then format it. You can change the volume label here if you want. I change it to BIOS update, doesn't really matter. The key thing here is you want this as FAT32. So that's really it. You wanna hit start. It's gonna ask you if you really wanna erase all this stuff. You say, yes I do. The window will disappear momentarily. We're gonna wait. And then it'll tell us the format is complete, which is fantastic. The next thing we wanna do is we actually now need to go download our BIOS now that our thumb drive is ready. So I would just go to Google and type in the name of your board. Mine is an Aorus B550 Pro AC. It's a gigabyte board. It's branded as Aorus. So there we go, click it right there once it pops up in the search results. Now you wanna end up on your motherboard manufacturer's website. So if you ended up at Newegg or Amazon, don't do that. Uh, go back to your motherboard manufacturer's website. And you want to find the support. Now, this is going to be different for each motherboard manufacturer, but typically they'll have either downloads or support because we want to come down here to downloads and we want to find the BIOS. Again, every motherboard manufacturer is a little different. Find the BIOS update and I would find the latest one for your board. So this one was just released uh, not too long ago. We're now going to click download. And here we are, it just uh, didn't take long to download. We're gonna open this up and you're gonna see this and it's, it's gonna be in a zipped file. So the next thing we need to do is we need to extract this off the zip file and onto our thumb drive. So we're gonna extract all and we're gonna come over here, we're gonna browse and we want this drive that's the BIOS update. This is the one we just formatted. Select that folder and then we're gonna click extract and we're gonna give it a second. Depending on how fast your thumb drive is, this might take anywhere from a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes. So once this is finished, and it's about to finish, 
Now it's finished, you're gonna get this, which is great, but we have another step. The next step is we wanna make sure that this gets renamed properly. So I've got right here, I've got all the different names depending on the motherboard that you have to change the file name to. And what that does is it basically changes the name of the BIOS to something that the motherboard's gonna recognize as the file to use for the update. So for gigabyte boards, the name of that is gonna be gigabyte.bin. For MSI boards, the name of that is gonna be msi.rom. For ASRock boards, the name of that's gonna be creative.rom. And for ASUS BIOS files, once you extract this, it actually has a little utility in here called BIOS Renamer. And you just run that and it'll automatically rename the BIOS uh, to the correct name. Again, that's only for ASUS boards. I would double check the ASRock. This is what it is for the Tai Chi boards. They don't sell a lot of boards with BIOS flashback on it. So just, you know, you can look this up in the bio, in the motherboard manual. It'll have the exact name. Uh, but this is definitely correct for a Gigabyte M MSI. Now, as we said, this is a Gigabyte board. So we're just going to right click the file name here. We're going to go to rename. Now, it's, it's going to not click uh, do the little file extension here. So just make sure you get all of it. Erase all of it. Now it's gigabyte.bin. And you'll get this little warning. You can just click yes and ignore it. And there we are. Now your USB flash drive is ready to flash your BIOS. Here we go. Now this is pretty simple. Now what you're gonna need, you need your power supply, you need the motherboard, and you need the thumb drive. Plug the power supply in, obviously. If you don't have anything to put it on like a mod mat, that's using the top of the box is absolutely fine. And then we're gonna plug in our USB drive. Now, every motherboard is gonna have a slot for the USB thumb drive to go into. In this case, on the Gigabyte board, it's labeled white. Consult your motherboard manual for where to plug yours in. Again, remember, you have to have BIOS flashback on this for it to work. Once it's in there, go ahead and plug in the 24 pin power cable to your motherboard and then plug in either the four pin or eight pin depending on your motherboard. Go ahead and power on the power supply, push down the BIOS flashback or Q flash button and let it go. The board is gonna begin to flash in the back and you're not gonna do anything, you're not gonna touch it until it is absolutely done flashing. This takes anywhere from three to five minutes and the board may power on and power back off a couple of times. You're just gonna let it do its thing until it is absolutely finished. So that's how you take a motherboard with BIOS flashback or a Q flash if it's a gigabyte board and flash it without the CPU using just a USB thumb drive and your power supply. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video. If you did, remember to give it a like. Of course, if you're new to the channel, this is what we're all about, condensing down the technical information to give you the best price to performance in your builds. So subscribe, click the bell icon, and you'll be notified when we go live with new content. It's absolutely free to you and a fantastic way to support the channel. With that, thank you very much, and I'll catch you on the next one.